someone to care for, to be there for. Hi everybody, welcome back to Spruverse, my scale model universe. And uh, people of Earth, welcome to part two of Build Aurora's Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, this 1968 uh, kit. Uh, that uh, was from the film Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, inspired by the novel written by Ian Fleming, if you can be believe that, of James Bond fame. The screenplay was written by Raoul Dahl. It starred Dick Van Dyke, and it was directed by Ken Hughes. And um, at a time back then when musicals were getting a lot of success, Sound of Music got an Academy Award, Oliver. So... Um, why not? You know, it was sort of that moment in time when uh, Dick Van Dyke was very, very popular. And, and uh, so here it is. Uh, it was a huge fan favorite for me as a kid. I love this film. I love this collision of fantasy and sci-fi. I don't build cars and I don't build planes, but I do build things from those genres that have some meaning to me. And this did. Now, I explained in part one how I got these two kits off of eBay, both of them in bad shape, partially glued and painted. But that was the point of the exercise here, to push my skills and to see if I could take something like that and turn it into uh, something we could all be proud of displaying. And, you know, since I sit here on a daily basis trying to improve my modeling skills, I think one of the big things we've got to always try to improve on is our ability to scratch build, our ability to work with the plastic and try to take something and turn uh, that looks like nothing and turn it into something. So here we are with part two. And uh, let me give you uh, some, uh, a quick progress report. Uh, but I want to go to the instructions first, my dear instructions with the lovely stain down the middle, <laughs> if you recall, and uh, sort of t tell you where I've been focusing. Um, I've been cleaning up some parts here on the chassis assembly, and we'll talk about that. Um, I've been doing a lot of work on the, uh, the body panels um, and um, trying to get that uh, to, to in relatively good shape. And I've also been focusing on the crankcase uh, and the hood and firewall and of course the radiator. Uh, that's been my focus. And uh, the reason why that has been an awful lot of work is because a lot of those parts required a lot of cleanup or fixing. I've spent a lot of time on these parts. So uh, to sort of show you what I've been working on here. Now I did have two of these, but ultimately I decided this was the better one for me to to, to go with. I had a partial repair here I had to do. And um, then uh, I've got some uh, a really bad seam where this di joint didn't come together nicely, which I'm working on. And I've cleaned up all of the glue. Uh, there was glue gunked all over here. And I've just gingerly been scraping at it, chipping at it, and cleaning it away. And so it's kind of uh, it's nice and clean now, um, and I'm slowly sort of working on it. I've got a little bit of Mr. Surface of 500 on here because I'm working on this seam, so I'll continue to clean that up. And uh, I put a little bit of, of sprue here in the, in the center to hide a terrible gap. Uh, and that gap was caused because uh, I, I think what happened was was somebody decided they would after they glued it together with some, you know, good old fashioned testers glow, right? Which melts plastic together and it doesn't come apart. Uh, it's not like some of the glues today where we have some options, you know, we can debond some things, but this one's a real, really, really challenging to debond. But anyway, I suspect what happened was in trying to do it, what they did was uh, they, they went to sort of pry this apart and they snapped this piece. And so in snapping this piece, they tore into the plastic. And so I had to sand this together, which lost me, obviously, some shape. Um, so I've used a lot of uh, sprue glue, uh, sprue goo, I should say, my homemade sprue goo. Um, and uh, I, I have just been slowly building this up. And I'm at a point now where I can give it one more final sand um, and, and, and see if I can't get a coat of, of, of primer on this. I will ultimately hit this with some, um, I think, Mr. Surfacer Red Oxide, 
uh, as my base coat because we're going to have a lot of fun with this. Uh, we're going to turn this into some beautiful uh, mahogany um, and we're going to do that with some oil paints and some washes and I'm really excited about that because I love doing stuff like that. Um, and then I'm sort of continuing to clean it up and sand it uh, before I, um, you know, commit to s sort of finishing this. Uh, the other thing you'll notice too is in this particular one, as opposed to the other one, they hadn't tried to put the handles on the sides. So I still have nice clean um, pin registration holes uh, for, for, for where my handles go. In the other one, they tried to glue a handle on it and I had glue all over here and it was just too hard to sand that down and, and, and scrub, you know, rescribe these lines. But I have been and I will continue to rescribe with my rescribing tool as I need to. Um, all of the rest of this uh, um, thing of beauty was all in chrome. <clears throat> and a lot of the chrome was off the trees and, and I just didn't know what I had. I have finally taken an inventory of the kit. So I now know from the two kits that I picked up on eBay, I can make one model. So that, that's a good thing. Um, uh, not without some challenges. Uh, you know, that, those, those classic mistakes we make as young modelers, uh, pulling or twisting parts off of trees and leaving those horrible nubs. I've got a lot of that. Um, way too much glue that was just spewing out everywhere and I had to clean that up. Um, but I've got everything together and um, in doing a test fit here, um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And you do start to see the car coming together. So um, as, I, as I put these two pieces together now, they now go together quite nicely and you actually start to see that what this car is going to look like. Now I did have to do some, um, some cleaning up here. I had to remove a, um, a little piece of plastic here that was designed to key into this piece of plastic, but um, they just don't, they don't, they don't match. They're, they were just awful. So I've removed it, sanded it down and thinned this piece out. And the net result is I'm, I'm now able to marry these parts together. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, I've got quite a bit of work ahead of me here in terms of getting this to, uh, to sit nicely uh, in, its, um, in its position. Uh, now it does sit there, but I've got a lot of gappage, but um, we'll, uh, with a little bit of uh, epoxy sculpt, um, we, can, we can smooth that out and I think I can do a pretty good job with it. Um, I still do have uh, two gouges here. They're actually supposed to be marks, um, I believe, for the, um, the front windshield, um, <clears throat> which um, will sit on there. And I think it may actually have, uh, hang on, let me see, let me pull the part and see if it does. Um, it may have, um, let's see here. Yeah, I've got one of the pins, little pin registrations is gone. Um, but I believe it sits in like this and it has a piece on that. So the good news there is actually, uh, that I'm going to get away with quite a bit, uh, uh, quite a bit because, um, I do believe once I've got these sitting in here and this on top that, um, I should, yeah, I should be fine. Um, so that's good. That's going to cover a lot of this, uh, a lot of this up. Uh, so I've just got to make sure that this, uh, well, what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just ch ch uh, trim that off. I'll trim that piece off. Um, and, uh, th that, that'll be fine. That'll sit in there quite nicely. Now I do have, uh, this, uh, freeze frame from a movie clip. And uh, what you'll notice in this uh, is that I'm not able to let's see. Oh, I've advanced it, of course, but well, that's okay. What you'll see is is that my hood is a stainless steel. Uh, I've got a leather strap over the the whole hood. The front grille and lights are all brass. The lights are brass. Everything is brass. 
there is no crumb, um, no crumb, uh, I except on some of the small sort of detail parts uh, that use handles and that sort of a thing, which I'll do just for some detail highlights. And of course, the buckle on the uh, on the leather strap, I'll, I'll, I'll make that a, 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 a silver color. But um, that's what I found so curious about this is that the model came, it was a world of chrome. They just chromed everything without hideous chrome paint. So I had to strip everything, uh, sand it down, get it to this um, part. Now I did show you in, in part one that I was using this uh, non-toxic cleaner. Didn't work for me. I went back to simple green and it came right off in 10 minutes. So go figure. Um, now, um, the, curiously too, this has a very, it's a very high polished plastic and that's good news for me because when I hit this with the, my, my brass colors and I'll probably use all clads, um, cause I'm sort of getting comfortable with them. Um, I think it's going to look pretty good. And so I'm really happy with how that's all come together. So uh, the next, uh, thing that I wanted to show you was the chassis here. Um, as we can, uh, well, you may recall from part one, is uh, they'd kindly glued this together for me. Uh, seam line here that I'm going to clean up. Now, you won't see it in the finished model. I'll take some pictures and post them on my Instagram account because I like to get in the weeds on the details of my builds. And so we'll, we'll sort of record for posterity in, in photos all the parts that you won't see but I'm going to uh, dry brush them and paint them because that's part of the fun of the hobby, right? Um, I've still got a little bit of um, gnawing I've got to, to work on. Um, you know, these little parts that, um, little nobbins and things like that that I'm going to go through and clean up. But once I've done that, I'll get the running boards on because that's what it wants us to do. And here are the running boards. Now, curiously, there are these vent, uh, vent slits. And uh, what these are for is in the film, um, um, well, you can actually see it in, um, in, this, in this frame grab. You can see it because uh, they're up. Because uh, in this, uh, just at this moment, uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is, is, is going to start flying. And so the wings have to come out uh, in order to um, hold up the 6,000 pound <laughs> canvas wings. Hey, hey, suspend all of your belief here, please, and, um, and stay with me. Because um, in order to make things incredible, they have to be credible, of which none of this is, but <laughs> a lot of fun, right? So anyway, uh, I digress. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I get a chuckle out of uh, uh, reality that isn't. Uh, but anyway, uh, so carrying on, um, the, the, whoever owned this kit before me was kind enough to start gluing along here with the, uh, the good old-fashioned testers glue. And of course, I had a whole bunch of nightmare to clean this off, but it had to be cleaned off because this was my best set of... of, of um, of uh, fenders here. So uh, as you can see what I did here with a number 17, I carefully did what I could and I've still got a little bit of cleaning up to do before I commit to gluing these together. But as you can see, um, I cleaned out um, the join part as best as I could. Um, and then I'm, I'm also working with uh, some files here uh, just to run along here to get this track nice and clean. And um, I've made quite a bit of progress because as you can see, um, of course it would help if I had it, uh, had it round the right way. As you can see, when you uh, drop, come on. Always when you're trying to do something on camera, nothing cooperates, right? Um, anyway, there. That sits in here like this. And I, I'm going to have to sort of squeeze that down. I maybe, hang on, am I in the wrong? I may well be. No, I'm the right one. I've got it right. It just, it looks a little wonkier today than it has in previous test fits. But anyway, trust me when I tell you, that's where it belongs. And there you go. 
and that drops in like that. So I'll glue this down and then the whole thing is going to get a coat of black. And uh, for the finishing detail, the, these are uh, all uh, copper, like, not like a brass copper color, uh, which will pop up quite nicely uh, against the black, uh, as you can see in this um, frame grab right here. So that will take care of that and that will get everything um, on um, on part to see here. So that will complete part one. We've discussed part uh, three and four. And uh, so I should get quite far along. And then um, all these little details here that you can see, um, I have been, um, I have been quietly, oh yes, quietly uh, de-chroming uh, everything and cleaning everything up. I've got all, all my parts in here and in here. So um, I've even got my uh, fuel tank here, which I have to put together and figure out how I'm going to do the, the, the seams on that, but I will. And so that's good. Um, and you know, what's interesting is um, it's one of those major reasons why you get rid of the chrome, right? Uh, because there's no way to, to do any kind of seam work and blending if you've got that awful chrome on it. And besides which, for the most part, it's pretty hideous. <laughs> I don't know. But there you go. To this day, they still do it. They still do it. Um, but there you go. So uh, stick with me. And I'll show you uh, what happens when we come back. Okay, the sweet smell of progress. Um, so at the end of uh, the last sort of little segment, um, I mean, it's all one complete segment, obviously, but at the, last, at the, at the end of the last segment, I was showing you my, all the pieces that I have been um, de-chroming and now I've been painting. Um, so this is one of them and, uh, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I'm, I'm using, um, what I'm using is, uh, this it's, it's, um, it is called bright brass. Now, the interesting thing about all of these colors, of course, is that, um, when you're using metals, I, I, I find that there, there is a, there's a real, um, it's interesting what, what you learn, what I've learned is with metals. Uh, so if you paint something silver, you know, give it a coat of black gloss first, then paint it silver. And then if you want to turn it gold, uh, just uh, hit it with some very light coats of, uh, of this. And uh, you'll, get, you'll get a really, really good result. Um, it works. And uh, so that was something I learned. And then, but with brasses, it's very interesting because the high gloss uh, doesn't like certain uh, of the pigments in these, uh, especially in the Vallejos. So, um, you know, you, you sort of have to mix and match and learn what works. Uh, and I've been experimenting with all clad, which people swear by. And I've had huge success with it in some applications and in other applications not so much clearly operator error but i do feel like i'm getting a lot more comfortable using these kinds of paints but i'll say this though is uh definitely for sure uh w one of the things that um i i, I have definitely learned is that um, w when you are um sort of trying to play with all these metal types of paints uh you definitely have to be careful that you keep consistent with what you're painting with what, uh, because sometimes I've made some substitutions thinking I could get away with it and you can't, I don't think you can anyway. I think you gotta, you gotta be consistent with what you're using. But anyway, um, as I said, we've got all of our brass part, parts done. Um, so, uh, they're all here and they're all sort of ready to go. Uh, this one, I just added a little dab of, uh, paint to it because I scratched it but that, that's drying so it looks a little wacky on camera but everything else the dashboard you won't see an awful lot of uh, but um, you know I'm going to do a little more to it um, I'm loving my horn uh, which hasn't got any washes on it yet so 
Uh, anyway, all my little pieces are coming together. Uh, my tires are coming together. Um, and I'm starting to add some details to those. So um, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Um, and now what I've, what I've been working on is uh, getting a wash on my, on my wood here. I've been uh, working away at, at this and um, I, I've got, you know, pretty good success. Now what you're looking at here is a high gloss varnish and all of my wash, my Tamiya uh, panel liner has gone in. And uh, that's drying at the moment, so it all looks a little wackadoodle because uh, it, it, it's, it just looks like a toy until you can, you know, get rid of that gloss. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to pull it down uh, with a satin. I'm not going to make it matte, uh, and I don't want it gloss. I, I want a satin, so I'm um, I'm going to use my my satin varnish from uh, from Vallejo. Um, which I've had pretty good results with, as long as you dust it and be patient, give it, a, give it a minute or two to settle, dust it again, give it a minute or two to settle, and then it works really well. If you try to hit it too hard, it, you're just in a world of hurt. And so um, I've been waiting for this to dry, and I think it's, it's drying. Um, looks like I got my panel liner on everything. I'm taking a quick look here just to make sure. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So I think what I'm going to do, because I've got a couple of things I want to do just to catch up here uh, for this segment. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I do want to start going after some of this, uh, just clean this up a little bit, just to see what I've got. Um, so I thought we could do that on camera. That could be fun. And uh, so I'm going to, go down to the very bottom here. I've learned to start at the very bottom because if, 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 if it all train wrecks, right, it, you, you know, that's the bit you won't see. And that's coming together really well. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. It's going to continue here. And then around this side. Now in the film, um, it's hard to tell because of studio lighting just how how dark this wood w was. But, um, oops. But you know. All's fair in love and war, war and you got to kind of do what you want to do. Now, what I do when I'm playing with wood grain, I take, uh, I actually have a lot of fun with it. So um, I work several colors. Uh, I take a base coat, and in this case, my base coat for this particular was the brown. Um, and I used um, this brown, USAF brown. And that was my base coat. And after I've uh, done that, um, I started um, with my airbrush. I hit it with uh, a couple of different variations of browns. Um, you can use whatever you want. I've got a rust here, a hull red. Um, I've got uh, orange brown. Um, I've got burnt red. You get the idea. Play with whatever you want to play with. And then if, after you've done that, um, what I do is I take a fan brush, just a, just a cheap fan brush, and you can see, see how it, it, it sort of grains up on you. And while the paint is still wet, just a little bit of thinner, just a little bit of your, uh, of your acrylic thinner, and then you drag it across the paint and you get this wonderful, you, you get this wonderful graining. Sorry about that shot. <laughs> It's, uh, it, it hurt my head, so it must have really hurt yours. <laughs> I apologize. But anyway, you get this wonderful graining, and, and, and you get this wonderful sort of wood effect. And, and um, I, I, I have a lot of success with that. And so um, that's my method. So as you can see here, I'm continuing to, to sort of uh, 
work on my work on my uh, I guess you would call it the uh, what do you call this the compartment I guess it is a compartment I guess it is a compartment um, the interior the sh it's not a sh you know there's all these words that I don't know I'm embarrassed to say. Sometimes I, I, I get a little um, tongue-tied when it comes to um, when it comes to words. Not like Wayne. <laughs> I don't get. I know how to pronounce a word. I just can't think of the word. It's. I guess it's the same disease, right? Run off at the mouth disease. But. Okay, so that's coming together really well. I'm 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 really happy with with that. My panel lines uh, look quite quite nice and punchy. And I'm going to continue to work on this. I've put a little bit of the brown wash uh, on the seats, so I'll continue to clean those up. Um, my tires, I've just got a little clean up to do on there. I've got some black rubber to put on the spare, and then get some red in in the center there. Um, I've got uh, uh, my brass color to now spray on my uh, exhaust pipe. Um, you can see the color it, it's going to be right there. That's sort of my, my little test. So that's working really well. And then we'll make sure that that gets dulled down appropriately. But I've also, uh, what I did was is I drilled a, a little hole in here because this was flush because um, it's an exhaust pipe, right? So I thought, why not make it look like an exhaust pipe? So. Um, then I've got um, my steering wheel to contend with. Now that's going to be wood. Um, here's that. Um, I'm also, I've got to work on my luggage rack and um, my gas tank, which I'm working on now. Um, I'm doing some seam work on it. Um, so that's coming along. Uh, it's going to take five or six uh, uh, layers of this just to kind of get this smooth. I've got some Mr. Surfacer going on it, uh, but we'll, we'll we'll see how that we'll see how that works out. But it's all coming together, so pretty excited uh, about where this is going. Um, my my wings are all painted, and um, I've hit them with a matte coat of varnish just to secure them. So when I'm playing with them, I don't scratch anything, or I try not to. Um, and then we'll give everything a satin coat when we're, when we're finished. So um, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty excited about that. Uh, so everything's coming along. So um, I, think, uh, I think what we'll do is, um, I think we'll finish in this episode. Why not? Let's finish this thing in two. We don't, we don't need to drag this <laughs> out another episode for the love of God. It's a great car though. I mean, come on. Uh, and it was, um, you know, it was a challenge to, uh, to, to, to clean up some of these parts. But we'll talk more about that in the final reveal. So when I say it should be illegal to have this much fun, <laughs> I am dead serious. I had a blast. And you know what? Um, I'm glad I did this. I have no regrets. And I hope once in a while you guys will think about taking on a challenge like this and, and, and you know, t getting something that doesn't belong in a box with some rat infested <laughs> instructions. It belongs together as a kit, as a model. Uh, Aurora offered this, uh, what, 30 plus years ago, if not more. I don't know how long it was available on the market. I'm not good at those sort of things. I should do a little more research and, and know my stuff. But I do know that the box says copyright 1968. So we're going back quite a ways. And uh, there was an awful lot that Aurora, uh, you know, did back then. Sloppy molds, uh, l lots, of, uh, lo lots of problems, uh, flash everywhere. And then, of course, as you know, I had to tackle half-built kits. So I had glue and paint and cracks and all kinds of things. But I'm pretty, pretty, pretty proud of what I was able to accomplish. Uh, so let's just sort of go around it. Um, 
it's uh, obviously, um, you know, h hard to know in the light whether or not you're really seeing something as as, as sort of nimble as as I see it, you know, in in real life. But I hope that the cameras can do it justice. I don't know. That's a great shot. So um, I try to do some things uh, from, you know, following the uh, the actual film itself rather than the box art. Um, I'm thinking I'm not entirely sure about uh, the, this gold striping here uh, that I've put on the fenders. And, um, you know, uh, when I look at the film grab, it appears to be gold to me. But um, I've also thought perhaps it was red. I don't know. But there you go. I've gone with gold uh, and it's my model. And there you go. Um, the, the car looks pretty darn close to the car you see in the film. Uh, there are a couple of weird, in, in, you know, weird oddities. Uh, these propellers, obviously, we, we, we don't see we don't see these propellers. Uh, the first time it flies, it goes off a cliff. And I looked at the castle scene again. I haven't seen the movie, I'm embarrassed to say, in quite a while. So if it does pr appear with propellers, uh, I, 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 I'm not sure. I didn't see it. Uh, the other thing, too, that I thought is interesting is this propeller at the back. In the film, it comes out of two doors in the rear of the caboose here. Um, it doesn't pop up from nowhere on the... Uh, uh, <clears throat> on the fan tail and and i'm and i'm suspicious that um you know uh s somebody decided that uh it was uh <laughs> it was a lot easier to just say hey have them just glue it to the fan tail at the back i don't know uh i am uh just i do want to point out uh you can see it there uh there let me back up yeah i've drilled a hole in the rear of my exhaust pipe so i'm pretty happy with that um, I do love the, the controls. Um, not sure how this flies. It's pretty funny how it, when it came off the, um, uh, when it, when, when it comes off the cliff, you know, <laughs> and it's coming down. Can you imagine the weight of this car and those, uh, those wings, they haven't opened quite yet, but they're opening and we're gonna, we're gonna get this going and whoa, there it goes. It's pretty awesome. I mean, talk about escapism. Come on. And I do understand from one of my subscribers that the company that built this car actually worked on Doctor Who. How about that? Um, and probably built other special effects models and things like that. Um, so um, I'm going to try and find out the name of that company and get it in the description below so we can all kind of check them out and see what else they did. But I thought that was pretty cool. Um, Quickly, uh, you know, uh, the only other thing I wanted to say was that um, I did uh, I, I did have a little bit of trouble with that um, uh, that paint stripper. You know, just I don't know. People don't want to use bleach anymore, and then this simple green that worked fine. Uh, and there's a bunch of other things on the market. So I apologize I didn't get a little more detailed on how to get the chrome off your parts. But please, I beg you. If you've got a kit sitting around that's got chrome parts from the kit, don't, don't use them. I beg you, you know, get the chrome off of it and paint them pro properly. You'll be happier. You'll be happier. Uh, the model will look so much better. Uh, you'll deal with seam lines a lot better. Anyway, you know that. I don't have to tell you. Um, uh, I'm not sure what we're doing next, but um, this build took about two weeks um and um i i just couldn't be happier with it i do want to try and get you a little closer to uh my woodwork because um i'm pretty pretty happy with that um hard to to really see the grain um but i'm i'm really happy with how it turned out and it looks pretty good it does have a satin finish on it not a gloss and not a matte um, and I did add these brass loops here. I didn't use the kit parts uh, for what I think are handles <laughs> uh, when you step up into the rear because um, I just thought that uh, this looked, this just to me looked uh, a lot better. Um, so anyway, that's just a, a quick look at some of the details. And unfortunately, this, this big old fan in the front here 
uh, does kill a, a lot of the detail underneath the car, like the license plate and the um, uh, and 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 the crank. Um, but other than that, all the details are on it. The windshield, uh, the rear view mirror, the uh, the lamps, uh, all the lamps are on it. Uh, couldn't be happier. Couldn't be happier. So thank you for coming on this journey with me. If you do like the content, please like and subscribe. It means an awful lot to me. Get in the weeds on my daily updates on Instagram at Spruverse. Drop me a line, uh, Spruverse at Gmail, or just leave a comment below. Either way, I am so grateful for all of you, and thank you for really supporting me and the channel. It means an awful lot to me. Uh, but as always, I wish all of you be well, uh, be safe, build something, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.